and welcome. If this is your first time here, I'm Matt Kester and this is Secondhand Overland. Now today I want to talk about an issue that we had last weekend or two weekends ago that almost caused me to blow up the disco. And when I mean that, I mean it almost caused us to lose the engine in the Land Rover Discovery 1. And I want to talk to you about it and tell you how I didn't do it and then share with you that information so that you can prevent this same problem from happening to you. This would go for anybody with an old Land Rover, especially anybody with an old Land Rover V8. Land Rover Discoveries are known to be problematic when they overheat and I got ours hot. And part of that is due in fact that the factory water temperature gauge just doesn't do its job. It won't peg the needle until it's far too late for you to control the thermal reaction in that engine. Case in point, we got ours pretty hot. I never saw the needle move until we were well into the 230 range. Now, how did I know we were into the 230 range? Well, that brings me to the point, and that's we have an ultra gauge. I was talking to Don from the Fitz Venture channel a while back, and he actually has this awesome built Discovery 2. It's it's actually two Discovery 2s. He's, he's put one together. And you should go check out his channel if you're into D2s, because he's done a lot of really cool work. But he had this little teeny extra set of gauges on a, it looks like a credit card size display, but right on there in the biggest section, he had displayed the water temperature. And I asked him what it was. He said, this is the ultra gauge. Now I heard some discussion about the Ultra Gauge and some other forums and its competitor, the Scan Gauge. I personally have had experience with the Scan Gauge back when I worked in the transportation industry. We had some trucks that had them in there and I loved it. I, I loved the features of it, but what caught my eye about the Ultra Gauge is that the readout was just so much bigger and clearer. So I got to investigating it and, and I looked at the Scan Gauge and the Scan Gauge is in the price range of about $170. Whereas the Ultra Gauge is right around 80, 85. They also have a Bluetooth model for around the same price that requires you to use your phone or a connected device. I'm not too big into that because I always want to know what that water temperature is. So I just went ahead and got the standalone unit. It's for 96 and newer vehicles. It plugs right into your OBD2 port and it has access to all that information that necessarily isn't displayed on your dashboard. And one of those is water temperature. So we're driving along and I'm noticing that the water temperature is peaking, but it's, it's weird. It, it creeps up and it'll get to like 210, 215, and then it'll come back down. But whenever I let off working the vehicle, pull up to a stoplight, roll down a hill, that temperature started spiking again. So as I was thinking about it, I started to realize that like, is this a thermostat or a water pump issue? And I kind of concluded it was a thermostat issue when we were starting to see these huge spikes in temp that got close to like 2.30 as we're out on this trip, and then they come right back down. So what that was telling me was that the internals of the thermostat weren't opening until much later than they were supposed to. Now, we put a 180 degree thermostat into the disco when we did the head gasket job about a year ago, so it pegs. At that point, we're like, well, there's something really wrong. So we said, well, you know, let's see if it's the thermostat. Fortunately, there was an auto zone or no, it was oh, 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 in the area where we were at. I looked online and they actually had thermostats for the disco in stock. Now I panicked because I wasn't necessarily sure if it was the thermostat or the cooling unit. So I went ahead and went with the 160 degree thermostat, picked it up and then we drove to camp. Now it was dicey driving that way and I should have known better. Going up a hill, we had one more thermal peak, but I needed to get the vehicle somewhere that we could stop, park it for a while, let it cool down enough so that we could go ahead and make this thermostat change. While we were there, we picked up a $6 thermostat, a bunch of RTV, and a bucket to drain the antifreeze into, plus two gallons of antifreeze to replace what we lost in the process. And we were able to take that apart, put it back together in the field, pull the old thermostat out, put a new thermostat in. We were real fortunate because that time that it peaked to 230, that was the only time that the indicator needle on the dashboard ever moved to indicate that the engine was getting hot and there was trouble. No lights even came on, which is even more alarming to me because 
that just tells me that you're not gonna get any kind of light or audible tone or any indication that something is wrong until it's way too far late. And when I say that that needle peaked, I mean it just moved. It didn't get into the red area at 230 degrees. It moved up to like a three quarter position. If like the red's right here, the needle was like right here. Moral of the story, I recommend anyone with a 1996 or newer, OBD2 compliant Land Rover V8, go get an Ultra Gauge. I don't make any money from this. I've never talked to the people at Ultra Gauge. I paid for mine myself. I have never gotten anything free from them. I can't affiliate any of the links that I'm gonna provide in the description below for the Ultra Gauge. But it's important enough that I'm gonna tell you that everybody with a Discovery needs this product or any kind of product that will measure temperature. I'm saying this one because I think it's the best value for the money. You can go ahead and get scan gauge. And scan gauge is a little simpler to work because it's got the buttons on the faces, the ultra gauge, the buttons to adjust settings or, or whatever else are in the back of the unit. You actually have to pick it up in your hand and push the little buttons on the back side of it. It's $80 whereas, or 80-ish dollars, whereas the scan gauge is 160. So do what you will with it. I'll put links to both of them in below. But what I'm telling you is go find some sort of external gauge pack that plugs into your OBD2 port because that small investment of money is going to save you an entire engine when that $6 thermostat fails. Now, on top of just monitoring water temperature, there are some other useful features in there. You can reset trip meters for more than just mileage in there. And one of the ones I used to use when I drove a big truck was fuel burned. It was important to me because the fleet manager of the heavy haul fleet that I drove for was a real genius and spec'd out a bunch of 600 horse, 16 liter heavy haul trucks with 140 usable gallons of diesel fuel. Now, if you're not familiar with that, we'd average about half a mile a gallon to a mile and a half a gallon with some of the really big loads we pull. Some days you'd get into the three or fours. 140 gallons goes quick. And when you've got something that big, you're not pulling into a pump really easy. So it was important for me to know how much fuel I had burned so that I knew when I was getting close to that 140 gallons if I was gonna have problems like I need to drive by this place or, or not. And I found that that particular gauge would be within about two and a half to three percent accuracy. So it is a good gauge of how much fuel you've burned. And I think that would be beneficial for somebody in this space who, well, let's just face it, discoveries burn a lot of fuel. They don't get great fuel mileage. So if you know going into something how much fuel you've actually burned out of the tank, it makes it a little bit easier to decide if you're gonna grab fuel at this gas pump or wait a little while. More than just a tool to do one function, you're gonna get a lot of utility out of having that ultra gauge just beyond reading that water temperature. I got our set so that it gives me a digital readout of engine speed, the tachometer, and I do believe we have ambient air temperature on the outside, which is something that the Discovery lacks altogether. It doesn't have an exterior thermometer, so it's nice to know what's going on outside. I think it's reading the airflow coming into the air intake, so there may be a little bit of deviation from what the actual ambient temperature is, but it's close. Like I said, I can't recommend the product enough, and I think it's important enough that we made a video about it. I'm Matt Kester. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Fruit Explorer Dad. Check out the channel at Secondhand Overland on most of whatever, on all the important social medias. And uh, go check out the website, www.secondhandoverland.net to get your merch needs. Until next time, be good.